Today, we're talking about common lies that people believe about God. And today, we're debunking those lies and sharing the truth. Let's expose the lies. Have you ever heard or have you ever thought, I gotta work hard to earn God's love? Let me tell you something, folks. That is a lie. Contrary to however you've been taught, God never stops loving you. And you can't possibly do anything more to earn God's love. He loves you right now. And guess what? He's never gonna quit. And that's the end of the story. In the scripture, Titus 3, verses 4 and 5, it says, But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. If you think that a relationship with Christ is about rules and about all you can do, you're just not right. You're misinformed on that. It's not about rules. It's about relationship. God loves you in your good moments and in your challenging moments. In fact, He loves you more in a moment than anyone could love you in a lifetime. So that lie is debunked. Secondly, maybe you've thought or you've heard someone say, God is mean and He's angry and He's just up in heaven waiting for me to mess up. 16% of Americans think God is critical and disengaged and just sitting in heaven critiquing their every action. 31% of Americans believe that God is an angry authoritarian ready to punish us at any time. Let me tell you this, that's not who God is. God's nature is good. He's a good father and he's not waiting for you to fail, but instead he's looking for you to succeed. He believes in you, and He wants you to live that abundant, overflowing life. He's a loving, kind Father, and He will never, ever, ever act outside of His nature. Lamentation says the Lord is good to those whose hope is in Him, to the ones who seek Him. God wants to be good to you. He's not in heaven waiting for you to mess up. Do you know that 24% of Americans believe that God is distant? and completely disinterested in their everyday lives, maybe that's you. And many believe that God's that way because of something that they've done, their mistakes, how they've messed up. Hey, we've all messed up. And that leads to the next slide, that God has forgotten about me. Let me tell you something, you are not forgotten. Others may have looked the other direction, but God sees you. He loves you with an everlasting love, and His love is not based on what you did or didn't do. His love is based on who He is. And even when you lose sight of God, He never loses sight of you. You are His first thought and His first choice. You are set apart, but listen, y'all, you are never set aside. Man, that's good. Another lie that we hear commonly is, God doesn't hear my prayers. Listen, I know sometimes it seems like we pray and we pray and we pray and we're not seeing our miracle, we're not seeing our breakthrough or whatever it is we're believing God for. In those times, you have to just Take that thought captive that God doesn't hear me when I pray because God listens every time you pray. God never misses a whisper. He never misses a sigh. He is with you and you can always call on Him for help. The scripture says in Psalms, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and His ears are attentive to their cry. Listen, no matter what anyone has told you, God hears you when you pray. Don't believe the lies. Another lie is this, God won't show me what to do next. Oh man, wouldn't it be great if He just unveiled our whole life before our eyes? (laughs) Listen, God won't show you the whole plan, but He will light the next step. Even when you're in the unknown, God can be trusted. He is working behind the scenes. He's lining things up for you. And God will lead you, but listen, it's going to require some faith. Some things don't need any more prayer. They simply need you to put feet to your faith and get moving. Another lie that you might have thought is this, God's word is not working. Listen, I prayed the scripture, I prayed the scripture and nothing's changing. Well, the scripture says that God is faithful to his promises. The word also tells us to hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Listen folks, God is a promise keeping God. In a world filled with broken promises, you can trust God to keep His promises. Sometimes we think that God's Word isn't working when in fact God is doing things His way and not ours. We don't have to understand everything. We just have to trust Him. We have to trust His timing. We have to trust His ways and His solutions. We have to remain flexible to God's plan. 
And in the middle of crisis, you have to remind yourself he's faithful and he's present. In the middle of the pain, he is faithful. In the middle of chaos, he's faithful. In the middle of the process, God is faithful. So don't allow what you see to be stronger than what God's Word says you will see. It may not be in your timing. You may think, I prayed this for years. I would encourage you to keep on praying. Remember, sometimes and oftentimes, miracles take time. Another lie is this, God cares more about others than me. My goodness, y'all, God has plenty of exceedingly abundantly to go around, and He gives good things to those who ask Him. That's who He is, and He always has your best interest at heart. You might be discouraged right now because you see others getting their miracles or getting promotions. Let me just encourage you with this. Stay in your lane and don't get distracted by others. He cares about you to the smallest detail and the smallest, most deepest, most confined desires of your heart. Another lie is this, God sent this suffering. Let me tell you something, God doesn't send the sickness and the pain, but He will never, ever, ever waste the pain. I was going for surgery for my back. I had three herniated discs. I was in so much pain in my leg, it was unbearable. I'd gotten to the point where I couldn't walk. One of my uh, things that I had to do before the surgery was to go and get my nerves tested to see if any nerves were permanently damaged. As I was sitting in the doctor's office, actually laying down, and the doctor was poking needles all in my leg, checking to see if there was permanent nerve damage. And I'm telling you what, it was so painful. I mean, like pain I've never experienced before had to get my mind off the pain and I looked at my doctor who was a beautiful uh, doctor and she had her hair up in a cap and I looked at her skin I thought April get your mind off this pain I simply said this your skin is beautiful what do you do the doctor looked at me and she kind of smirked a little bit and she said really and I said yeah what do you do she said it must be from chemotherapy I'm in my uh, about with stage four cancer and the eighth round of chemo And I looked at her, that was not the answer I expected, and I realized at that moment her hair wasn't up in a scarf because she was hiding her hair, she was hiding the fact that she didn't have any hair. You know, I just told her, I said, man, you look so good. And she looked back at me and she said this with a tear in her eyes, she said, thank you, it's from a lot of faith and prayers. And you know, I don't normally tell the story of my mom unless I'm on a platform at a church or a conference. And I just, because she said, because of faith and prayers, I just looked back at her and I said this, my mom was given a few weeks to live because of metastatic cancer of the liver. And she got her miracle because of a lot of faith and prayers. And now she's 80 plus years old, totally cancer free. Now, who would have thought in the doctor's office when I was in so much pain and this doctor was going through chemotherapy for stage four cancer, that God would just interrupt our lives. When I said that to her, a tear came down her face, and she said, you're one of two people who have ever given me hope. She said, the other lady that gave me hope, she also brought me a book about a lady that was healed of cancer. Guess what? That lady's name was Dodie Osteen. I looked at the doctor. She looked at me. She had no idea that that was my mom, and I told her, that's my mom. We had a moment there in the doctor's office in a hospital right before I was about to go get surgery. Let me tell you something. You know what? God gets the greater glory. In the middle of your pain, in the middle of something that you might be going through right now, let God use you in a way. You never know the divine setups that God is going to place in your life. I never knew that that was going to happen in the midst of so much pain. That's just how God works. He never, ever, ever wastes pain. Listen, you will have opportunity in the middle of your pain for God to show Himself faithful, not only to you, but to others. And you know what? It just might influence them to serve God. The last lie that we'll go over today is this. Oh, this is so good. And if you're thinking this, I pray that your heart is changed today. And that's this. God has lost faith in me. Let me tell you something. Let me give you some really good news. No matter how far you've run, God is one step back. He hasn't lost faith in you. He hasn't stopped believing in you. He's excited about your future. Even when you lose faith, you can always turn back to God. Listen, folks, following God isn't always easy, but man, it's always worth it. Don't believe the lies that the enemy wants you to believe about God. God is so loving and so kind that He sent His one and only Son to die on a cross for you. 
and He has great plans for you. He has answered prayers, miracles, and breakthroughs, and restoration, and healing, just waiting to show up in your life. Don't believe the lies. Keep the faith, keep trusting, keep believing, and by all means, keep praying. Thanks for watching today, and I hope this has been a blessing to you. If you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to do that today. And until next time, have an amazing day.